Hey folks, Dividend Gardener here. Welcome to Dividend Gardening. When it comes to some of the biggest rivalries of all time, you've got Coke versus Pepsi, you've got the Toronto Maple Leafs versus the Montreal Canadiens, and then there's Canadian Pacific Railway versus Canadian National Railway. You would think that railroad tracks in Canada had a checkerboard pattern on them, because these two are out here playing chess against one another. You see, when it comes to Canada's two largest railways, there's a bit of a rivalry, a railvery, if you will. This past spring, it really intensified, because Canadian Pacific Railway had made an offer to buy Kansas City Southern, and then Canadian National Railway, just out of the blue, outbid them for it. A merger with Kansas City Southern would have massive strategic importance for either of these railways, because they would be the only freight railway network that connects Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Right now, if you wanted to send goods from Canada to Mexico, your goods are traveling with at least two different companies. If you have the choice to deal with two separate companies versus just one, you're probably going to go with the provider that can simplify that logistics process the most. Now before we dive into things, in the interest of full disclosure, I do own shares of CN Rail, but this isn't meant to be a pro-CN video, or a video where I'm taking sides either way. I've been watching this play out since the spring, and I still don't think I really have an opinion on what the eventual outcome will be. I think regardless of what happens, both of these businesses are going to continue to perform well. I just find this whole story really interesting, and wanted to summarize the facts as best as I could. To understand why the stakes are so high, and why there is a bit of a rivalry between these two companies in the first place, we've got to go back into the history books. You might think from their names that Canadian National, being the railway with greater assets and revenues, has always been the historical coast-to-coast -coast leader, and that maybe Canadian Pacific was more of a regional player that's been growing over time, but that would be an incorrect assumption. In fact, Canadian Pacific was the first railway established in Canada, back in 1881. And despite the name, they've always been a national company. They built the first railway in Canada from coast to coast. Decades later, in 1918, the Canadian government took ownership of several rail lines that went defunct, mainly from the debts that they took on in building their railroads. It's not exactly a cheap endeavor. The government consolidated them into a new crown corporation called Canadian National Railways. And this meant that Canadian Pacific, which was a privately owned company, now had competition in the form of a new public government owned company, something that I can't imagine that they were too happy about. These two railways would go on not only to compete in the rail industry, but in other industries as well. The two had competing telegraph services, steamships, hotel chains, and even radio networks, with CNs eventually being sold to a public broadcaster that became the precursor to the CBC. In the early to mid-1990s, CN began exploring the process of becoming a private company. While that happened, CP Rail and CN Rail proposed a merger and the government said no. Then, CP Rail offered to buy CN's lines in Eastern Canada, while an American buyer would purchase CN's lines in Western Canada. And again, the government said no. And following that, CN Rail became privatized and listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange in 1995 expanding over the decades to purchase U.S. railroads to bolster its rail network from north to south. CP Rail would also become publicly traded in 2001. A couple years later, Hunter Harrison became the CEO of CN Rail. He had been the vice president and chief operating officer since 1998. And during his time at CN, he implemented an operations strategy he developed called Precision Scheduled Railroading, which increased how efficient and profitable CN's operations were. 
Harrison retired from CN at the end of 2009. But in 2011, a hedge fund called Pershing Square Capital Management started to buy shares of CP Rail and eventually became the largest shareholder of the company. Pershing Square's CEO, Bill Ackman, wasn't satisfied with the direction CP Rail was headed in and was involved in a proxy battle with CP's board of directors, proposing that they recruit Hunter Harrison to be the new CEO of Canadian Pacific Railway. Ackman won that battle, and so that's exactly what happened. Harrison became the CEO of CP Rail, which was an event that CN was not particularly happy about. Harrison would use that same strategy of precision scheduled railroading to improve CP Rail's efficiency and profitability. In 2013, Harrison recruited Keith Creel, who had been the chief operating officer of CN, to become president and COO of CP Rail. During this time, CP Rail also tried to merge with a couple of US railways, namely CSX and Norfolk Southern but those attempted mergers didn't pan out. When Harrison retired in 2017, Keith Creel became CP Rail's CEO, a position that he holds to this day. So needless to say, there is quite a history between these two railways. Before we talk about the latest developments, let's flip the packets and learn a little more about CN and CP Rail at a glance. Both of these stocks are listed on Canadian and US stock exchanges. CN trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange as CNR, but it's listed on the New York Stock Exchange as CNI. CP is listed as just CP on both exchanges. Both of these companies operate in the industrial sector and in the road and rail industry, which is a subset of transportation. CP was founded in 1881, while CN was officially incorporated in 1919. CN has a market cap of $95 billion, while CP has a market cap of just over $60.5 billion. CP's headquarters are in Calgary, Alberta, but up until 1996, it was headquartered in Montreal, which happens to also be the home to CN. It's actually a legal requirement that CN's headquarters remain in Montreal, that was a stipulation that was set at the time that CN was privatized in 1995. CP Rail pays a 19 cent dividend quarterly on the January, April, July, and October schedule. The only reason it appears lower now is because they recently did a 5 for 1 share split, so the dividend splits along with that, but it doesn't make a material difference to anyone who held CP Rail shares before the split. It still works out to the same amount, you just have five shares giving you each 19 cents to make up what that dividend was. CN Rail also pays a quarterly dividend, 61.5 cents, on the March, June, September, and December schedule. Neither company has a drip or a share purchase plan. CP Rail has been increasing its dividend for five consecutive years. As for CN Rail, it has a 25-year dividend growth streak. Before I continue, I'm trying out a new strategy here on the channel called Precision Scheduled Light Planting. This will help improve efficiencies and get this video out to more people who are interested in these railways or in dividend investing. So if you're enjoying or learning something from this video, please plant a like on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you so much for making sure that those likes are planted on time, and now let's get back to the video. Now that we're up to speed on Canada's two major railroads, let's talk about Kansas City Southern, which is what each one is hoping to acquire. It's the smallest of the US Class 1 railroads, that is to say, the major railways in the United States, but it does have a unique advantage over its competitors. Its routes extend from the Midwestern United States into the southeastern US all the way down to central Mexico, with lines that reach the Pacific Ocean as well as the Gulf of Mexico. On March 21st, 2021, Canadian Pacific announced the acquisition of Kansas City Southern for $25 billion in cash and stock, subject to approval from the US Surface Transportation Board, which is the regulator of major railways in the US. 
To put that into perspective, for every share of KCS that a shareholder holds, they'd receive $90 in cash and 0.489 shares, keep in mind this is before the share split, so that's actually a significant amount, of Canadian Pacific. That at the time worked out to be about $275 for each KCS share. The company would be renamed Canadian Pacific Kansas City, its headquarters would remain based in Calgary, and Keith Creel would remain CEO. Two factors working in favor of Canadian Pacific are that there's no route overlap between the two lines, and even if you combine the two railways, they would still be the smallest Class 1 railroad in North America, so there'd still be quite a bit of room for competition between the existing railways. As the weeks went on, CP Rail and KCS got hundreds of letters of support from customers, ports, and various stakeholders. But then, on April 20th, 2021, Canadian National Railway outbid Canadian Pacific Railway with a $33.7 billion offer in cash and stock. For each KCS share, that would work out to about 1.129 shares of CN, plus $200 in cash. That puts KCS's valuation at about $325 per share. CN does have some, though not much, overlap with KCS. It's about 100 kilometers, and a combined CN and KCS would become the third largest Class 1 railroad in North America. Its agreement has a similar structure to the one that CP's original one did, in that it would create an independent trust for KCS before Surface Transportation Board approval. Within that same week, CN also announced hundreds of letters of support for its bid of KCS. Both railways have competing websites entirely dedicated to their respective deals. CP's is called futureforfreight.com, and CN's is connectedcontinent.com. They're even competing on who has the best alliteration between the two here. When CN made that new offer, CP Rail said that it wouldn't outbid CN, and that they believe that CN's offer is, quote, illusory and inferior, and that it would be less likely to clear the regulatory hurdle that it would need to clear for the deal to go through. In the end, the KCS board ended up approving CN's offer. And that was where we were at until August 10th when CP Rail increased their original offer, so remember they were offering $25 billion, they increased their original offer to $31 billion. Still a little bit less than CN Rail, but if the goal is to get a deal done, maybe an increased but slightly lower bid is just high enough to sway the decision back to CP Rail's favor. The KCS board decided that the new offer was not considered a company superior proposal, and that it's continuing to move forward with CN's offer. That's where we're at at the time of me recording this video, but let's consider what some of the possible outcomes might be. For KCS to get the green light to merge with CN, two things need to happen. Number one, the U.S. Surface Transportation Board, or STB, has to approve the voting trust structure that's been proposed by CN Rail, and it says that it'll make its decision by the end of August. Number two, the KCS shareholders still have to vote to approve this deal. Kansas City Southern has rescheduled its shareholders meeting for September 3rd, 2021. If those two things happen, and the Rail Transportation Regulatory Agency of Mexico, or ARTF, approves the merger as well, then the deal moves on to its next phase. The STB has to do a comprehensive review of everything in the deal before they make their decision as to whether they'll approve or deny the merger between CN and KCS. So these are only the first two steps. Now, if only one or neither of those two things happen, we're back to the drawing board, and it's uncertain whether CN Rail would try again with amendments, or whether an offer from CP Rail would be considered again. 
There's also another scenario in this whole situation, and that's that nobody gets KCS. For all the campaigning that we've seen from both sides, remember that we're still in the very early stages of a merger. It's entirely possible that the US Surface Transportation Board looks at whichever offer makes it to that final decision point and just says no. The winner in this scenario could actually stand to lose big if their deal falls apart at the finish line. The way the voting trust structure would be set up, KCS shareholders would collectively have a really significant stake in the winning company, and the winner would have to still put up quite a bit of cash and try to recoup their losses by divesting KCS in trust. So that's where we're at right now. I don't know what's going to happen from here, but I'm curious to know what you think. Does the current offer from CN stand a chance of going through? Do you think that this merger is a good thing for any of these railway companies? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please plant a like. Thank you so much if you've already done it, or if you're just doing it now. Also, I'm not a financial advisor, and this video is not financial advice. It's just for fun and entertainment purposes only. I do my best with the amount of research I put into these videos, but it still might be inaccurate or outdated by the time you see it. So always do your own due diligence or seek the advice of a licensed financial professional. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.